My name is Dr. Von Crazy, and welcome back to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Last time, we beat the Shadow Queen. And this time, let's head back in, because some new things will open up after you beat the game. Well, actually, you don't have to beat the game to do some of the things, but... You're a strange one, sir. There must be something special to convince you to return. Oh, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. Long time no see, Mario. I'm totally glad I got to see you again. This is awesome. Everyone's ready. We well, knew you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you. So, are you ready to go? Wherever you want to go, we are so there with you. Goombella will automatically be at the front of your party, but everything is exactly the same as you left it when you left Rogueport last time. You have all your party members, you don't need to go around the world to collect them again or something. Everything is just here. Oh! Yes, this is something. Hello, Mario. This is Mush, Jolene's younger brother and first champion of the Glitz Pit. Remember me? Thanks for helping me out recently. Still not sure what happened, but I do know if that if you and my big sis hadn't saved me, well, I get chills just thinking about it. Anyway, I was wondering if you heard about my big comeback. I've been pushing all of my limits with the most punishing training regimen of my entire career. I'm finally feeling and seeing the results. So it's time for Prince Mush to make a grand return to the ring. I want you to witness the fruits of my labor, Mario. I've asked my sis for help, and she's arranged a special exhibition match for just the two of us. New champ versus the original champ. If you accept my challenge, I'll be waiting for you in the glitz pit. Prepare for a Prince Mush performance like you've never seen before. I'm actually not sure that you have seen me battle before, so just believe me when I say I was good. Don't leave me waiting, Gonzalez from Prince Mush. That is a brand new super boss added to the remake that just challenged us. If you head back to the Glitz Pit, you can just challenge him at any time you want. I'm not going to be doing that this episode, as there's a couple of things I want to do first, like grab these. Ah, uh, the x yux Tattle, the mini x yux Tattle, Gloomtail's Tattle, Beldum's Tattle, Marilyn's Tattle. Oh, and that's all. I thought there was one more. But that should be almost all of the Tattles. I don't think I've missed any except for the ones in the Pit of a Hundred Trials. I hope I haven't, at least. I also want to talk to Professor Frankly because that chest. <laughs> you seem pretty cheery, as I always am. And as always, I am happily busy with my research. By the by, do you know what was in that tricky chest we found in the palace? It contained a dried mushroom! Oh no, it's nothing to be disappointed by. Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms a thousand years ago. This is a groundbreaking anthropolo anthropological discovery. Well, it's nothing that Mario would be impressed by, but it is definitely something useful for a uh, historian like uh, Professor Frankly. I also want to know what these two will say now that I've done everything. Is it me, Coops? Are you more toned than before? Well, 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 well. You'll grow out of that shell soon if you aren't careful. Well, hello there, Mario. So, how are things today? Things are just great here, thanks to you. Okay, that wasn't as interesting as I'd hoped. I was kind of hoping they'd mention something about the end game. <laughs> 
we saw Beldum and Marilyn in the epilogue, I kinda wonder if they're around here. Maybe in this empty house? Maybe they just aren't around. No, nothing pops up you've had with Vivian either. Oh, what does the sign say now? When the light fades from Roadport, a hero emerges inscribing his name in legend. That's kind of boring. Graffiti Corner. Super Luigi, all of five volumes now on sale at the Toadbrows Bazaar. The mistake of the Green Baron. Uh, I might as well pick up the last one now coming soon to theaters. <laughs> I do intend to read those at some point. Pretty expensive book, 256 coins. And I actually never talked to Luigi in after chapter 7. Oh, his partner left. I've been catching a breather here. You know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Uh, let's hear about Hate Song Tower. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, and this part is just wild, but here goes. Hate Song Tower stands up atop a jagged, unclimbable cliff beyond the northernmost sea. The winds whistle down the cliff, howling like banshees, singing songs of hate. People say it's pretty much the scariest place in the world, and I had to go there. Blocking out the bone-killing howls, I somehow managed to reach the tower's door. I was terrified, but thoughts of Princess Eclair warmed my heart and gave me power. All of my companions felt the same way. They were with me to the bitter end. The door to the tower swung slowly open to reveal an inconceivable darkness. I tried to call out Princess Eclair's name, but I couldn't even breathe because... As I strained my eyes in the darkness, I saw the most terrifying beast of all! The Chestnut King himself appeared before me! He was monstrous and drooling! Puddles of toxic goo dripped from his mouth, melting the very ground at my feet. I couldn't stop shaking, but I gritted my teeth and faced the evil beast head on. I dodged the king's fangs, jumped onto his chest, and gave him a hammer whack. My swing split the air and crashed dead center into the chestnut king's skull. Bob powered me up, bro. I was going toe to toe with the king, and I was loving it. This is it, I thought. I can win this. I'll risk it all on my next blow. I gripped my hammer tight and waited for my moment. The tension stung me. Shwack! The ocean winds graged against the wind tower windows. With that sound as my call to battle, I advanced with no mercy in my heart. And then, and then... Ah... I beat him. I defeated the chestnut. And an even worse beast came next, a nightmare thing, but I beat it too. I rescued Princess Eclair. It was all over. And then I came back to Roadport and had a light lunch, and that's about it. Huh? You think there's more to the story than that? Not at all. That's it. That's the whole story of the quest for Princess Eclair. The end. But my adventures won't here. end here, bro. They'll never end. Well, I see that you have something to talk about with your book. Actually, you know what? This guy novelized my quest! He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me here at the end during my breaks from my adventure. I didn't know anyone would be interested in reading a book about Luigi. But Super Luigi came out recently and check this out, bro. Here in Oldport, it set a new record for consecutive weeks at number one bestseller on the bestseller list. <laughs> Hooray for Luigi, bro! I started reading it the other day, but it's an encyclopedic account in multiple volumes. Extra cruciating detail, bro. It's like a history book. It seemed like one, anyway. They've got it in the shop here in Roadport. How about you snag a copy, bro? He's been through a bit. Uh... Do I want to read those now? I don't really have a lot to do in this episode except read through things. Although I do want to talk to this guy. Da -da 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 -da. 
At this point, I want to buy all of his badges. There is a secret reward for having every single tattle in the tattle log, having every badge, and uh, getting all of the recipes. And that's what I'm going to be doing next. After I do some flavor text things in this episode. Way over here, on the opposite side of all the rooftops in the Rogue Park, you'll find this guy. Good day to you, sir. Is there a tale you want to hear? These are little tales I can tell you now. This guy will sell you the stories of the history of Rogueport and the city that got destroyed. As well as a few other things. Dragons and Dungeons. I don't know which order these appear in. I assume they just appeared from top to bottom? <laughs> Ages ago, a city flourished here in peace and splendor. But it was destroyed in a single day by, the, by a demon from the dark beyond. Historians claim a great calamity befell the city, but nay, it was a demon. The city sank below the ground, and one quarter of the old city became the demon's den. This demon put fear into the hearts of all men and sent out minions to take the land. And its den, its palace, grew rich with treasures stolen from all over the world. If there is another tale you wish to hear, just ask. In order to increase its already formidable power, the demon created crystal stars to hold the essence of the heavens. These stars were scattered across the land, the better to exert the demon's influence. One of the castles built to contain these stars stands near Petal Meadows. The demon built a dungeon near its palace and filled it with terrifying monsters. All those who fell into disfavor were thrown into this dungeon to rot. Yes, and the demon also had three dragon pets. Hooktail, Gloomtail, and Bonetail. These dragons flew across the land, spreading fear and sorrow over all. The dragon's remains have never been found, and even now, some nervously wonder if they still live. We've seen Hooktail and Gloomtail, but we've not heard of Bonetail before. One day, there came a hero who could vanquish the fell demon. The young toad from Petal Meadows was strong of arm but shy of voice. All those around the boy teased him endlessly about the way he spoke. But when the demon cast its fearful gaze across the lands and reached out, the young toad used his strength and honor to defend his people. And he became a hero to all despite his odd voice. There was a wise Goomba from Boggly Woods, gifted in knowledge of the world. When beasts rose to take the woods, this knowledge helped the people fight them. And this Goomba, who knew the way that every monster would attack, he began to think of a way to banish all monsters from the land. A Koopa who traveled the world alone learned of the darkness covering the land. He went alone wherever evil dwelt and banished it. Here with Hell and here bravado. The monsters grew to fear his scar-riddled Koopa who thwarted them at every tomb. But the grave Koopa was finally taken in by a trap set for him by the monsters. But then Abu who fought with the monsters came and used her magic to free him. The brave Koopa's spirit had melted the heart of the cold Boo Lass. The Boo used her powerful magic to learn more about the evil they faced. We cannot destroy this darkness alone, she decided, and her face a grim mask. We need the to Toad Hero of Petal Meadows and the wise Goomba of Boggly Woods. The Boo's magic drew the four heroes together to send the demon from the world. And so the four heroes finally set out for the Palace of Shadow. The power of the world-devouring demon was greater than any could imagine. But the wise Goomba soon realized that this was the power of the crystal stars. She thought of a way to take the stars and use them against the demon. She told the other heroes her plan and set it into motion. 
banishing their fears. The Boo's magic and the Toad's strength created a gap in the demon's defenses. At that moment, the brave Koopa seized the stars and succeeded in badly damaging the demon. But even the brave Koopa's stroke was not enough to end the demon's reign. The wise Goomba thought of another use for the crystal stars in that dire hour. She suggested sealing the demon forever with the crystal stars. All agreed. The heroes matched their strengths with the power of the crystal stars, and they successfully sealed the demon's soul within the deepest part of the palace. Together they made it so that only all seven stars could break it to the seal. The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon and all of its powers. But the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they'd feel nothing but when they let them go. A black chest would appear to seal their souls within. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the scar stars so the seal would remain. The last four stars each carried the curse, which claimed each hero. The hiding places of many of the crystal stars have now faded into legend. But some say that the wise Goomba hid one in the great tree. At that time, many monsters wandered in the nearby Boggly Woods. The tiny punies living in the woods were constantly tormented by the fierce monsters. Pitying them, the Goombo hollowed out the tree for the punies to live in. The punies were so grateful that they swore to protect the crystal star there. Once the Boo heroine hid their star in the steeple, she was trapped in a nearby town. Some say the crystal star lies in that steeple still. That was only two lines, okay. <laughs> I guess they didn't put much thought into the Boo heroine. The Koopa hero went to a southern isle to hide his star when no one would find it. But the Koopa was so tired from his journey that the pirate Cortez stole it easily. In that very instant, the brave Koopa was trapped in an inescapable chest. But Cortez did not realize the power of the star and lost it among his treasures. The strong toad held his star and continued his arduous journey. But eventually, the miles took their toll upon him and he collapsed. The traveling healer happened by and saved his life. But the toad knew his fate was to be trapped in the chest when the star was gone. So he asked this healer to hide the star in a place known to no one. I actually don't know what star that would be. Is that the moon star? That actually makes sense. After the demon was sealed in the Palace of Shadow, many refused to come near that place of terror. But as the years passed, an entire generation was forgotten, and the penniless and the immoral began to congregate in this once barren place. This place soon became a populous harbor, the town of Rogueport, and some even began to say the, legend the underground city held a legendary treasure. But they were unaware that the demon slept beneath them still. The heroes knew the seal might not last forever, and they sought to make the crystal stars available to one who might need them. So before going to their individual dooms, they all made a map to all the stars, and to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. That's all of his tales, so the uh, heroes got sealed away in the black chests that we opened over the course of the game. The Toad Hero was the first chest we opened in, uh, in Cocktail's Castle. Uh, the second chest was, uh, that wasn't Chapter 4, was it? No. No, the first, wait, who was the first one in... The Toad Town Sewers, actually. Uh, the Koopa was in Cortez's lair. The Boo was in, uh... The Boo was near Twilight Town. And I guess, by process of elimination, that means the Wise Goomba was underneath Toad Town, not Toad Town Road Court.
I guess one of them had to be the odd one out. A while ago, we gave this guy money to dig for oil. And I never read his journal, so let's do that. The night before. I'm finally off tomorrow. I've filled my pack with keys and I'm ready to go. My to-do list is crossed off. I owe so much to all my investors, not just money. The old get-rich-quick dream, but this is different. I have a reason. See, I owe it to my hometown. It's so cold there, people are constantly shivering. If I find oil and send it there, then people can use it to heat their homes. Oil will make me rich and make them happy. It seems to be the perfect goal, right? I have always, always had this dream since I was very small. Of course, getting rich is a big part of it too, but who doesn't want money? Money, money, cover me with it, please! <sighs> well, enough for tonight. Why would you write that in your journal? <laughs> The Bazaar Friend. Why did I have to turn out like this? I got to towed down by boat and took off on a train to the foot of Mount Rugged. Unfortunately, you can only get from Mount Rugged to Dry Dry Desert on foot. And tragedy awaited for me as I slogged faithfully up that winding trail. It was a huge, awful vulture. I had read about it in my travel brochures. This Bazaar accosted all travelers on Mount Rugged. I hightailed it, but Buzzar had me in its sights. I felt a piercing jolt as its clug claws dug deep into my backpack. After dropping me onto a cliff, Buzzar seemed to forget me and disappear. I let out a sigh of relief, but when I tucked my back, I noticed my pack was gone. My pack! And it was all my food and money to start the operation! No! That mangy Buzzar made off with everything of importance to me! All I have left is this journal, a shovel to dig for oil, and my life. But perhaps living is miracle enough, or so I'd like to believe. But now, I can't turn back. I climbed down the mountain to the desert. The dry, dry desert sprawls out before me, beckoning dreamers and fools. I am both, and I set out with a heart full of dread. A helping hand! I am now in a place called Dry Dry Outpost. Someone pulled me, lifeless and parked, from the merciless desert floor. It was a Koopa with a fine mustache named Colorado. Hey, he's there. An angel in a pith helmet. He was a world-traveling adventure archaeologist. I told him about Bazaar. And my quest for oil. And my dreams of riches and work for my people. After I spoke at length, he gave me food and water. I asked him why he would be so kind, and he looked into the distance and said, Turning one's back on an ambitious dreamer invites others to do the same to you, old boy. I just, I just want to believe in every dream this sad old world can muster. This guy, he still chases his own dreams, dusty dreams of archaeology. We stayed up all night discussing each other's dreams, it was great. A reliable guy. I am now to the Desert Oasis. After Colorado left, I set out from Dry Dry Outpost to find my digging point. But the desert is so wide, it's impossible, but it's impossible to find anything without a guide. I had no idea where I was going, and my head was splitting in the heat. My throat was burning and sweat. Was I awake? Was I asleep? I heard a voice calling to me from far away. Hey, are you a nice guy? If you're a nice guy, then give me something nice. I didn't have the food or water I received from Colorado. I had nothing. Why do you lie here? If you are a nice guy, give me a nice thing and I will help. I croaked. All I have is... All I have is my dream. When I next awoke, I was at this oasis. You're awake, I heard. There was a little Moser there in a gray headscarf. My name is Mostafa. You had nothing to give, but I got something nice anyway. I don't know how or why, but it seems I'd been saved by yet another stranger. Do you need a guide? If there is something somewhere you want to go, I will take you. Unbelievable! I'd actually found a reliable guide. <coughs> the Digging Point. We're here! I'm finally at the spot where I'm supposed to dig for oil. 
I was told to draw a line from a blue cactus to a cactus-like rock. I went north a precise distance from the exact termination point. I ended up here at a point between dry dry ruins and the oasis. Mustafa had guided me this far with his skill and bravery. He said, you are a nice guy. Your dream will come true. Mustafa believes this. He left me then, leaving me to fight this battle on my own. All I have to do is dig here until I find oil. That's all. I stocked up on lemons and limes at the oasis so I could last a few days. Dang! <laughs> at least you won't get scurvy! I must find that oil. The long dig. I am digging for oil now. And my hand shakes as I write these perhaps final words. I have been digging from sun up to sundown, but still no sign of that sweet crude. Maybe I've just picked a dry spot in this cursed spot in this cursed desert. But I'm sure this is where my lovely told me to dig. Yes, I'm sure of it. There's no more food or water, and even my hopes have dwindled to nothing. Ah, this is it. My brain dries here with me under these unforgiving skies. My dream. My... My? Wait, no, this is not it. My dream is of something else. Yes, something else. Dig. Keep digging. I must keep digging. Arms move. Body work. Find oil. The rack. I am now on a boat back to Deer Roadport. I did it! I finally struck oil in that dry desert. I have left the day-to-day -day operation to my men in the field and now return home. It all came true. Striking it rich, finding oil, my dream. But somewhere along the way, this became more than just my dream. So many people have helped to make this dream happen. So many! You had nothing to give, but I got something nice anyway, dear Mustafa. I just want to believe in every dream this sad world can muster. Ah, Colorado. People who lent me money and gave me food and showed me the way. So many hands reaching out to help me. I must do something for all of them. That feeling has pushed me even harder. I must share this feeling with the people who helped me as I struggled. I must share these words that have seared themselves into my heart. Dreams come true, Lumpy. With that done, that is all the extra hidden text that I want to read. So next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we'll be heading into the Glitz Pit once more and fighting Prince Mosh. See you guys then.